All right, we're going to begin the, uh, our regular meeting, the Arlington Housing Authority. Uh, it's 10 past 7. It's November 16, 2022. Uh, roll call. Joanne? Here. Nick? Here. Brian is here. And Fiorella is sick, and Gara's in the building somewhere. That's <laughs> exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll move on to the executive director's report. Yeah. Uh, first of all, this thing here is a Zoom thingy and it's recording audio and visual. And if, if, if and when you speak, the little thing goes around and looks at you and puts you on the, on the TV screen. Yeah, so it's high tech. So we do have, I assume we have some folks in the Zoom. So, it, so um, be careful, it's listening to you. So. All right, go ahead, Jack. So um, some updates at Drake Village, the roof project, electrical panel, fire alarm upgrade at the cottages and electrical panel upgrade at the Hauser building are in, are in the design phase. The creative placemaking project will go out to bid in January. Uh, we hope that the dual project at the cottages will go out to bid soon. Um, additionally, we signed the contract today for the Hauser building fire alarm upgrade. Um, additionally, there's, there's gonna be, an, there's going to need to be an electrical shutdown as part of the required testing for the electrical panel upgrade at the Hauser building and at Chestnut Manor. Arrangements have already been made for residents to be able to spend the day at the community center uh, for, the chest, for the Chestnut shutdown. And the Council on Aging will be providing transportation. That shutdown at Chestnut's gonna to be tomorrow. Um, we've also made arrangements for a paramedic um, to be on site. Uh, for the duration of the shutdown in case some residents decide to stay so that we can check on them and make sure they're okay. Um, at Chestnut Manor, we have been able to lease out four units um, as part of the fire, the, the units that were offline and that are going to be coming back online. Um, and we will be making at least uh, three additional offers effective for December 1st, but we hope it's going to be even more. Um, and just also, we had we, we should have had some additional lease ups, but we had a few people uh, refuse offers. Uh, we are committed to filling these units as soon as possible. Uh, we have not received a start date for the window replacement or air source heat pump project at Chestnut Manor yet, but are hopeful that it will begin in the next few months. The air source heat pump project at Winslow Towers has started, as many of you in attendance know, and we'll continue to uh, update you as far as access that's needed or anything else. And if you have any questions, please feel, fr feel free to reach out to the main office and we can, we can always discuss it. And if, if needed, we can set up a meeting. Uh, at Minotomy Manor, the designer selection for the window replacement um, slash um, deep energy retrofit project is currently out to bid. Um, I, I will be providing the board a breakdown of the phases and costs associated with the entire deep energy retrofit. Our focus is on the first phase, the window replacement. Um, additionally, I'd like to congratulate the board uh, for our High Lab grant award. Uh, the HA is being awarded $2 million and high lap funding by DHCD for the Monotomy Manor Deep Energy Retrofit Project. Uh, we are waiting for a start date for the weatherization work at Monotomy Manor, Cusack Terrace, and the Great, Co and Great Cottages, but um, we'll continue to follow up and, and try to get it scheduled as soon as possible. Um, in regards to the Chapter 689 um, Special Needs Development, uh, DHCD conducted a site evaluation to, to determine the best location for that, for that development based on um, the two potential locations that were available. Um, initial conversations have indicated that the area in front of 54 Medford Street will be the recommended location by DHCD staff architects. Uh, they will be providing an official recommendation in the coming weeks. Once received, I will share it with the board. Um, additionally, the, the request for proposal for the purchase of a condo um, is, is uh, currently out to bid, and uh, the bid opening will be on December 8th. Um, we're hoping to receive some proposals we have not uh, yes, we yet received any. And then also, um, I had been asked to provide an update related to the maintenance meetings, the monthly maintenance meetings. And over the past several months, um, we have been meeting with local tenant organizations on a monthly basis at their developments. Uh, we have found some real success in these meetings. While DHCD ma ma mandates a quarterly meeting and recommends that it, it lasts at least a half an hour, we focus on having an hour meeting at each um, or at each location. We feel that this has improved communication, helped us identify and address issues before they grow. Um, it has also been a great tool for us to communicate upcoming events and projects. 
while receiving feedback. Uh, based on some feedback from local tenor organizations and our own staff, uh, we have some recommendations for the next six months of maintenance meetings. Uh, continue to have monthly meetings with the tenant associations at their sites. Have two of these meetings per year at the main office with all LTOs present. Uh, the QS and that's our local tenor organizations. Uh, the CUSAC Terrace Tenant Association indicated that meeting with the other tenor organizations creates bonds and connections with their fellow tenor organizations, which will lead to sharing ideas and creating a support system. Uh, we understand that that's a very difficult job, and, and I think um, it's, a, it's a great idea, and, and um, we'll definitely support that. Uh, additionally, we will be requesting um, tenor organizations to provide an agenda um, 48 hours before the meeting so that the Housing Authority can prepare for the meeting and ensure that we have an agreed upon list to work on. This will help us pre prepare for the meeting and ensure that uh, agenda items are addressed and or answered. An update for resident services. There will be tree lightings and other holiday themed events at the different developments over the coming month, um, which we will be sending invitations out to the Board of Commissioners for. Fidelity House has started their programming on Thursday afternoons at Monotomy Manor. The Council on Aging is scheduling blood pressure and diabetes education programs at senior developments. Resident, the resident services coordinators are also working to assist residents seek rental assistance, fuel assistance, and assistance with other utilities like internet. Um, if, you, if you're interested in any of those, obviously Winslow Towers, um, the Housing Authority pays for the electricity and heat. Uh, but if you're interested in potential options related to internet, reach out to Tricia Horgan, who might be here, might not be here, but you can reach out to her at extension 340. The Arlington Fire Department will be having fire safety sessions at each development over the next month. And um, we've also ordered some more COVID test kits through MEMA, uh, which we're hopeful will arrive soon and then we can distribute to residents. I also wanted to provide an update on, on the conference we went to this week. Uh, Mass Naro, our advocacy group, they held a conference uh, for housing authorities in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, many of the AHA administrative staff attended the, the conference for at least one day, and there were a wide variety of sessions that covered topics related to opportunities to grow and enhance our programs and developments, meet resident needs, improve communication, address conflict, and maintain tenancy. There were many sessions and networking opportunities that will lead to improved efficiencies and better processes related to various laws and regulations that govern us. There were also important updates related to upcoming changes from HUD and DHCD. A few takeaways that especially excited me were uh, DHCD is procuring an agency to centralize the screening of priority and preference for the wait list. This will allow the housing, the Arlington Housing Authority to fill units more effectively by reducing the staff and man hours needed to fill a unit. Uh, the entity that DHCD procured is set to take this over in September of 2023. So we're really excited about that. It's gonna save us a lot of money, a lot of man hours, and it's gonna lead to a better process for applicants. Uh, and also as a result of um, the Mass Rental Voucher Program and the AH AHVP Voucher Program being added to CHAMP, um, the centralized wait list, there could be opportunities to add more MRVP and AHVP vouchers at the Arlington Housing Authority. We will be looking into this so that the Arlington Housing Authority can be considered for this and we can better serve the community. The Economic Development Bill was recently passed, which will lead to additional flexibility for the Arlington Housing Authority to preserve and create affordable housing. There have been some innovative projects at Somerville Housing Authority, Chelsea Housing Authority uh, that preserve public housing units while adding affordable housing units. This new bill will help other housing authorities um, like the Arlington Housing Authority consider similar projects in the future. Thank you. Any questions, Jack? So, so the way it was explained at the conference was because they're going to centralize the voucher programs, they're going to have a better idea of usage and need in communities, which is going to result in us being able to advocate more effectively for these vouchers. And the, there's been a large increase in, in, the, in, the, um, in the funding that's been earmarked for that type of program at the state level, but most of those vouchers have been going to nonprofits. Um, through the centralized system, the hope is that they'll be able to now uh, give more of those vouchers to housing authorities. So, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, the, the clubs put an article in every day for the last three or four days. 
yeah, the Globe has put an article about housing. The paper for the last three or four days. Uh, some of them pretty good. Uh, any other questions for Jack? So, do we have a um, motion to accept the executive director's report? So moved. Second. Sandy is online. One votes, right? Yes. So, that was moved by Nick and second by uh, Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yeah. Nick? Yeah. Gar? Yes. And Brian, so yes. So, we're going to number four. You need signatures on this? On this? I'll sign. send it out as a copy. Sign out. Yeah. Uh, we need to approve the, we do this annually, uh, the certificate of compliance for the uh, lead paint loss. Um, anything to say about it, Jeff? We, we are complying with those notifications at least up. Um, it's part of the, part of what we do for, for new residents and um, we are in compliance. Yeah, pretty simple. Yep. <laughs> Our family housing is our family housing is due yeah. 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 So do we have a motion for that one? Second by second. That was moved by Nick, second by Gar. All in favor, Joanne? Yeah. Nick? Gar? Yes. Brian's a yes. Uh, certification of the top five compensation form in your packet here. Uh, this is just a reporting thing. It's nothing that um, we just send this to DCHD. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's part of the, one of the annual reports that we're required to submit to the state. Okay. Any questions on this? We got a motion to approve. Then we to approve the top five comp form. Second by. It was moved by Gar, second by Nick. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian? Yes. Number six, certification of year end financial statements and tenant account receivables data. Rich? Yep. You all have your packet for the reserve? Which is our CPA uh, for the AHA. has been with us for 40 years. 30, 40 years? Mm -hmm. 40 years. Mm -hmm. You don't look at yeah. over 35. <laughs> 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 All right, it's in your packet, but go ahead. What we have is our results of operations in our fiscal year end September 30th. We have to report to both HUD and DHC via financial conditions on each program. Now, our Section 8 program actually ran a profit of $33,143 this year. And we have an operating reserve balance of $947,854. Now our state 400 program, we had a, a surplus of $269,298. We did extraordinary work over and above what the regular budget is and the amount of $236,601. And we were able to transfer a restricted reserve amount that we had set aside for some work in the future into our operating reserve for 104409 so after we did all the work and did the transfers, we made a profit of $137,106. And our reserve balance is $1,321,853, which ends up being 52% of the reserve that DHCB allows you to have. We can't go below a 35% reserve level, but we can spend between the 35 and the 52%. Um, but if you go below the 35, they just send your budget back and they just tell you to make your tax. So we're watching that. You'll have that next next month when we do the operating budget. Our state 689 program lost $48,533. And that was only because they made a contribution to the air source heat pump job for the office. They contributed some money into that. But their operating reserve is $150,447. The state MRVP program made a profit of $874 and has an operating reserve of $8,900. We have our affordable housing program, which had a net income of $358. We did about $1,200 worth of extraordinary work, but we had a net loss of $842, which left, left us with a reserve of $859,842. Uh, and then we have our services trust program, which had a net income of $120,112. 120, 
and has an operating reserve of 160609 And that's basically because of the antenna money that's on the buildings goes into that account. So that, that account makes money and we make payments for the services from yeah. those tenants. Now we normally do a recommended equity transfer in that program year to year so that we can buy affordable housing. So I'm recommending to the board that we actually transfer 100,000 from that account and put it back into the affordable housing program, which would give us a reserve of $959,842 to be used in the future to buy affordable housing. Hopefully the price of uh, real estate will come down, we'll be able to buy something, but it's okay if you keep building your pot of money, when something comes up, you can buy it. And that would still leave us a, a, a reserve in the service of trust of 60,609, which is adequate for now. And then each program, we, we attach the cost comparator, which shows you the income each program, the expenses by line item, and it comes down to the net surpluses that I just discussed. You'll see on the line there, a compensated absence line item, which has no budget amount. And that's the unused sick and vacation time that's on the books that we have to expense based on what the HCD, how the HCD wants us to do sick and vacation time that's unused. Other than that, everything else is within the parameters that the HCD allows. We were within 2% of our spending level at the end of the year, which is great. We did do extra, like I say, we did do extraordinary work of $181,912, which just some items to let you know, we do renovations when the apartments become vacant, we do ADA appliances, we do elevator repairs when they come down, we do a lot of plumbing work, we do a lot of extermination work. We, do, we did security cameras and we did uh, fire alarm systems and we did a lot of hot top patching in all the sites. And then in, in the next section below, when kitchen appliances go, we have to buy new kitchen appliances. We put them in there. We bought some computers for the office. We always buy the maintenance men, whatever equipment they need. So they bought snow blowers and a snow brush to help out, and they bought a floor scrubber to do the floors. On the 689 program, as I said earlier, we spent money basically for the air source heat pump. Other than that, we did minor repairs over that building of $3,465. dollars because we've been spending money on that on that program for years, and we keep that building up. The Section Eight program, uh, we again we made thirty three thousand one hundred forty three dollars. It was the only number in there is the compensated absence. Their share is eight thousand five hundred nine dollars. And you'll see at the bottom of that we have HUD gives us the money to pay the landlords. They advanced us an extra one hundred twenty four thousand dollars this year, which they'll use in the next fiscal year. You never get to keep it; they just advance. And then they'll just lower it the, the next month. Again, we they did the SOS heat pumps for $87,570 this year. The mass rental voucher program, again, $874 profit. Everything was in line with what the budget amounts were. And then the local affordable housing program, we uh, we lost $842, which was, was fantastic. We really want that program always to break even. And we didn't do any any repair work over there of any significance. And then we have a Ross program, which is a grant program through HUD, which uh, works with our Section Eight tenants. And we got a grant amount of eight, eighty nine thousand eight hundred forty one dollars, and we spent the full grant amount. So that's that's nice when you get it and you have the expenses you can charge it for that program. And that's why the other programs can make you. Their idea is we don't make money, but this year we had a very good. Year. So how do we stack up? Because you obviously do the work for a whole host of housing authorities. How do we stack up to the most? Very good. You're, you're right. Are we in the top five? Top 10 percent, I would say. But you Top five percent. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to boil you up. <laughs> Move that one to the end. <laughs> no, we're considered large. Five, yeah. No, the size of, of, of the units within the housing yeah. unit. Yeah. 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 We have a large Section 8 program, over 400 units that put yes. into the large category. Yeah. Yeah. Bad debt. That's for those bad debt. Bad debt, what we wrote off this year? Yeah. yeah it's it on something. page two. Yeah. We brought in $4,125,000 in rents for the state yeah. program. We wrote off $26,351 on $4 million. 
That's excellent. Okay. That's very good. So we do, we do. If you don't pay your rent, we call you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was through, that was through, you know, out of the pandemic we did that. Right. Uh, but no, we, we try to, if you want to collect your rent, so otherwise you can't do what you pay. Yeah. Excellent. Any other questions for it? Uh, is that hundred thousand dollars for the move? Is that what is on the number seven? I think that yes. is number seven. Yeah. Um, so do we need to? You need to approve these financials. Yeah. First, yeah, we need. Okay. And then you can do. So do we have a motion to approve the financials number six? Move. Second. So that was moved by Nick. Second by Gar. All in favor, Joanne. Nick. Yeah. Uh, Gar. Yes. Brian is a yes. So now we go to number seven to approve the transfer of the hundred thousand that we just mentioned. So, do you have another question on that? I, I do not. No. Go ahead. I move to uh, transfer hundred thousand tenant services to affordable housing. Second. Second. That was moved by Gar. Second by Nick. Uh, all in favor, Joanne. Yes. Nick. Yes. Gar. Yes. Ryan is a yes. Uh, number eight approval of the donation of the holiday help program, Jack. So this is something that we've we've done in years past. It's um, the Holiday Help Program provides, you know, gifts uh, to to children in need in the Arlington area, um, or in the town of Arlington. In in years past, I believe the donation was a thousand dollars. So I, I would I would recommend um, an, a, a donation again this year for at least a thousand dollars. Where does it go again? To the um, Holiday Help Program. Which is managed through uh, Health and Human Services. That's she she was the um, she did run it for many years, but uh, Colleen Ledger is running it now, and she's with a AYCC. Yeah. So do we have a motion or any questions on that? Yeah, I move to approve the donation to the Holiday Health Program for the power. Okay. That was moved by Gar, second by Joanne. All in favor, Joanne? Yeah. Nick? Yeah. Gar? Yeah. Brian is a yes. Uh, number nine, approval of the collection agreement with Assurance Recovery Solutions. Talk about write offs. Oh, you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Can I open it? Yes. Uh, about the thing you just asked? Oh. oh. I'm, I'm not aware of what collection agency was used in the past. Um, I can give you. Um, yeah, I would. I would imagine we did, but I, but I don't know who who it was. We yeah, and we do not have one right now. Um, but and this wouldn't be for. We're not pursuing current residents with this. This is former residents who left without with a um, with a rent balance. That's. If the intent right now, I, you know, the language in there might be more inclusive of, of other actions if, if needed, but the intent at this time is to pursue it with uh, residents that have uh, vacated. Okay. So my former life, you know, I'm just going to be transferred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I think this is an open agreement that management would tell the firm who to collect on. We would give them the list of individuals. So so like he just said, we're only going to go after the people that leave. Don't live here anymore, but owe us a balance. But it wouldn't be in this. Yeah, it wouldn't be in this. I can't 
Um, and I would like to make a motion that, in general, even though there are some tenants who complain to the rent, I think I would like to make a motion that we should work with our excellent resident resource coordinators to look for sources of income that the parity table, their ways to get over it, probably losing a job and starting another and getting back to plan for the rent. Um, and also, in terms of this, if the company is 60%, mm -hmm. 40%. And I, you well, know, I think this is again. Jack's intent is to go after people that leave us and leave us with a big balance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's we just wrote off twenty seven thousand dollars because of that. Yeah, and so we we do have a duty. Yeah. We do well. That's a lot, Michael. Twenty seven thousand dollars. But we do have a duty to try and collect monies that are owed. So we have that fiduciary duty. So I think. I think this is the situation where you let management decide um, who to put into collections. No, I can't vote. Okay, that's probably true. But didn't see the price. And I can. He just said it's going after the people that don't live here. Yeah, but it doesn't say that. But that, but and he's the I... director, and he's so. If you want to change that to make a motion that we 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 only go after people that don't live here anymore. Yeah. But you Some need a collection people, agency to do that. Well, you, we don't know that. You're, 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 we don't know. Some Come on. He's, not all of them, but some of them. Well, you're, you're throwing out. I know. Yeah. Excuse me. Have you ever dealt with a collection agency? Yeah, because yeah. before you send anybody to collections, which I'm still working and I'm still doing it. You vet each person. You check to see what their current uh, attitude is, what their current uh, facilities are. You wait three months. You never send anybody to collections until after 90 days in arrears. So you're vetting them. You're finding out what's going on before you go into that. I understand what you're saying, making a very good point about the current resident. But that's not going to happen if you've already got people working and vetting those people and what their actual balance is and when they owed it and all that. And if they're in a nursing home, that's part of the vetting. And that's a write off. After I finished my I'm not getting 
So what is the feeling of the board? We've done it before. Yeah, we've done it before. So and we bet it, we bet it people And it's people they it's people, yeah, they people that we chased the we bet in the past. We vetted it people out in the past. So yeah. we figured out if they I know would pay or not pay mm -hmm. people that we felt. Just know, people that we felt yeah. were just not paying up. But that's not included. No, but we leave it to the attention. We leave it to the, the direction of and, the debt. And it says on the lease that we can collect the rent, right? Right. Right. Okay. right. All right. So I make a move motion to approve the collection yeah. agreement. So the second. Second. Um, move by Gar. Second by Nick. All in favor, to win. No. Nick. Yeah, yes. And Brian's a yes. Number 10, uh, approval the updated lease with Elliott Inc. Uh, for the Donnelly House, Jack. And this is going to be effective November. Um, it's going to be effective November 1st, which has already passed. But um, this is, in, this is in, um, in regard to the public housing notice that came back over, um, over the summer, 2022-12, um, in which it indicated that the leases need to be updated um, with a new rate. Um, so we worked with Elliott Inc. Um, in the Department of Developmental Services um, to make sure that this amount is um, is something that they can move forward with. Um, it's it's in accordance with the. This is the outfit that. Runs. No, this is for the um, the Donnelly House. They run the Donnelly. They run the Donnelly. We we, we, we own the lease. The lease is for them, so they manage it. Oh, okay. So the Department of Developmental Services provides the the, the residents. Yeah. Elliot manages the site and has you know individuals there twenty four seven, and then we're the um, we're the landlord. Oh, yeah. Yep. So um, that rent is thirty nine fifty two a month. Yes. Yeah. So, right. Yep. And it's um it's based off a calculation from yeah, the ACD. Frank, the people, the people. Not the people that live there twenty four seven. It's El it's Elliot's. Elliot. Yeah. I had a man Okay, well, you didn't make an amendment, but if you want to. Yeah. Well, let's let's deal with this first, and then I'll go back and open up the other one. So, any questions on the on this lease for the Donnelly House? No, we're happy with it. Yeah, we're very happy. Yeah. Can I just say this is the first thing we say that since that building we put up? It is. Seriously? Yeah. That's yeah. the first thing. We were very good to that. They, you know, they kept the building up I and mean, we did the repair work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they provide a phenomenal service. Yeah, okay. The building. So they, the building. yeah. The, they obviously make money. Elliot makes money in the end. They provide the services to the residents here the rent. through the yeah. state. So, so yeah. Mass Health is somebody's so paying them. <clears throat> Right. Correct. And then they bring the people. So they, and they provide the services to the people, but the Department of Developmental Services provides the uh, referrals uh, for the individuals that live there. So it's, it's a little. It's a, the experts. Yeah. yeah. To run something like that. No, no, I, no. I mean, why is it a lease as much as a contract? The way the state set it up. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 All right, any questions, any further questions on that? I, I move to approve the lease uh, with Elliot Community Human Services. Okay, so it's moved by Gar, second by Joanne. All in favor? Joanne? Yeah. Nick? Yeah. Gar? Yes. Brian is yes. So now um, let's back up. We'll go back to number nine. And Joanne? Five minutes. Um, all right. My other, well, my first step was to get a And he said, so that's a good that never, right? So 
For sure, but I would say uh, it's typical, it's typical we, we do this before we write it off. So, Joanne, can you just repeat your amendment again? Okay, anybody want to second that? All right, here, no second. Uh, no second to the amendment. Let's move on. So we'll go to number 11 approval of the maintenance service agreement with Winchester Housing Authority. Oh, did I skip one? No, I'm okay. sorry. That's right. Yes. No, Jack. And this is um, this is an agreement that that existed in the past, and I've had some recent conversations with the executive director over at Winchester Housing Authority, uh, Sue Doherty Cashel, and she's indicated that you know because they're a smaller, they're medium-sized housing authority, um, they could use some additional supports, especially during certain times of the year. Um, so we drafted up this agreement, um, which will not only reimburse us the rate of the maintenance staff that go there, but it will include um, you know a half. Um, a half rate to make up for the administrative um, losses related to benefits and, and other things. And, and we'll make that decision based off of, you know, our, our, our capacity at that time. Um, so so the, the way that it will work is they'll reach out to either myself or Chris, uh, Chris Partridge, Director of Maintenance, and, and then we'll make the decision on whether or not we can move forward with that at that time. So I could assume during a snowstorm, we're not going to send out people over there. That's correct. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. But it would, it would be more for like in the summer, um, and the maintenance staff at Winchester, are, which is a, they have a, a staff member and a half, so they may be on vacation or they may have something happen in the family, and then they would be, we would be able to potentially help them with after hours services or um, or have a, a staff member available to respond to emergency calls for them. And where would this revenue be reflected in the budget? Uh, as retained revenue. Okay, we do have a full time electrician. Um, so that's um, their motivation for this is is largely to be able to utilize our electrician uh, for some of the different services they need, which is which is understandable. Uh, but they also are interested in having access to our maintenance staff um, to in, in those cases where their staff call out sick or they take vacation, they need somebody to cover um, their emergency calls or during the after hours or during the day. And we can <laughs> And we would make that decision based off our capacity at the time. So if we if we were, you know, if we had X number of guys out in that given week, then we'd just tell them we unfortunately we can't uh, we can't help them. Yeah. I remember we did this when I was on the road work in Burlington. Belmont. Belmont. Yeah. Yeah. You um in the past you did a an agreement with Burlington for okay. section eight. Okay. Yeah. Um so and, did section eight. But you've yeah. done it for you've done this agreement for Winchester. Yeah, I, I remember doing it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, we don't know the administration how it played out. If we actually sent people over, but as you know, we didn't hear anything. We didn't hear anything wrong. Anything wrong. But can we just talk to you? That's my understanding. I'm not sure why it stopped, but um, we didn't like the the director. Yeah. The time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion for this? So moved. Second. 
Second moved by Nick, second by Guy. All in favor, Joanne? Uh, yes. Nick? Yes. Guy? Yes. Brian? Yes. Uh, number 12, Donnie Manor window replacement project. Yeah. And this is a um, another application for funding for that project. Um, we're going to request some funding, um, some sustainability funding for the replacement of um, stoves and, and um, retrofitting them so they'll be uh, electric stoves as per the you know, the, what we're trying to do in that project, uh, which would be in line with, you know, some of the different policies in town at the local, federal, state level, as far as, you know, moving towards a carbon neutral footprint and things like that. So we're, we're requesting, I, I got to confirm with the state, but I think we'd be requesting at least $140,000 uh, for that purpose. And this is just an application request. That's correct. When will we hear if we got it? That's uh, it's it's on a rolling basis, so I mean it could be immediate or it could take you know maybe months depending upon the funding availability. And then did you put in here the cost of removal and and installation of the old gas and the new electric? I believe it's rolled in. Actually, I should have passed this out to me the um to the meeting. This is some information just about the cost breakdown for the deep energy retrofit pro project, which includes a window replacement project. I can yeah, pass this down. Uh, but you'll you'll see the breakdown in um in that first scope. Okay, any questions on this one? So we're approving, we're authorizing him to submit it. Yeah, I would make a motion to approve the application to submit this uh, for this award. Great. Second. So I'll move by Gar, second by Nick. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian's a yes. Number 13, acceptance of DHCD uh, or APA targeted award funding in the amount of $748,000. And this was the funding that we advocated at the state level for um, to do the uh, Federal Pacific Electric Panel yep. um, replacement or upgrades. So we were... We were very pleased um, to be told by the state that they were going to fully fund, um, you know, or, or they were going to fund at least a good portion or, or fully fund those projects. Um, and it looks like that the amount that they've allocated is seven hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred thirty-two dollars uh, for that purpose. And nice. that, and those, and the sites for that is the Hauser Building, the cottages, and um, in Chestnut Manor. And when will we be able to get this project done? The pro all three projects are in the design phase right now, and um, and out of you know, preparing for the bid process is those are those uh, electrical shutdowns that are going to happen at Chestnut Hauser. So once they complete that, um, the design team, the electrical engineers, should be able to move to the bid process. and And our goal is to start the project as soon as possible. Excellent. That's a great one. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, we, yeah. We're voting to accept the money. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's an easy one. Yeah. Sure. Right. No brainer. <laughs> So we want the money? I, don't, I need to accept this money. Great. Uh, second by Nick. So moved by Gar, second by Nick. Uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yeah. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian's a yes. And we have another happy one, number 14, acceptance of more wrapper money for yep. $906,000. Jack. And, and this was the uh, additional money that, um, so what, what the state decided to do is they would give every housing authority in the state an additional year of formula funding, which is the capital funding that you know provides the, the work to our buildings and, and sites. So this is just an additional award for what we would normally re receive in a given year. Right. And we've already, you know, we've earmarked this for some projects in need. Um, and, and what what we ended up doing is because the cost of materials and, and labor have gone up so much related to the pandemic, is we were able to offset some of those costs on projects we wanted to get done, ensuring that we're actually going to be able to get those projects done, they won't get delayed. Any questions on that? I do have one little yep. question. So yep. this is like a designated money for a certain project or it's a pool of money that, that it's yeah it, it was um it was they gave us the money and, and indicated you know what projects do you want to put it towards. Okay so it's non-discretionary they call it is that what they say? No, it's you, you have to tell them what project you want to use. Yeah, first. But you decide. And then they, they give us the money. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and I can I can send this out to the board. I may have sent it out a few months ago, but um, and it just indicates the the funding and which project was put towards. So we we had uh, we had some smoke and carbon um, 
um, device replacements down Menominee Manor, which has already been completed. And this, this money helped fund that. Uh, we had, um, there was some elevator upgrades that were required uh, for the elevator inspector um, that were costly. They were gonna cost um, over $9,000 for each, each building. Um, and we were able to pay for that uh, through this instead of out of our operating budget. And uh, we were able, like I said, to apply to some projects that we were uh, worried about not having enough funding um, to complete, to be able to actually go out to bid or be able to accept bids on. Okay. So do we have a motion for that? Yeah, make a motion to approve. Number 14. Second. Second. So approved by, uh, moved by Gar, second by Nick. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian is a yes. Number 15, discussion. Um, this coming year, 75th anniversary of the Arlington House Majority. So, so uh, it, it's, uh, I was chatting with Jack. We, we would like to propose that we put together, you know, a multifaceted celebration, you know, potentially, you know, do logo change, you know, flyer, uh, banners, things like that. So we can dig out some of the old pictures, um, make copies, put them in the, in the buildings and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, I, I sent and I gave some things to the yeah. office before. Yeah. Yeah, I think we put a little committee together, made up of representatives from the different facilities, board members, and and come up with a you know an agenda for the year. I mean, we could. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. 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 So, so let's put your thinking caps on. We can talk next month. Yeah. So we'll yeah. come up with some some uh, thoughts. I'll flip out one. Uh, my son's school, uh, the high school is doing 125th, and they've got a pretty cool agenda of things. So this, you know, everything from speaker series to, uh, you know, we could do a banquet. We could do the whole thing. We could do. So I think it's something, something worth doing. We have to have the right to the right to see and then the right to the right to see the Yeah. So that's just the discussion thing. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so now we go to the approval of the special minute. Special meeting minutes of 92722. Everybody check them out. Yep, to win. What does it say there? Up at the top. Oh, okay. Uh, so we will we'll press that out. So approve them with that with that change. Mm -hmm. And will we accept the meeting Special meeting Second. So moved by Nick, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Tar? Yep. Brian, yes. Now we have number 17, approval. The regular meeting minutes for October 19. To approve the October 19, 2022 minutes. Okay, do we have a second? So we have it moved by Gar, second by Nick. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian is yes. Uh, now we go to public participation. Is James in the room? He might be in the shop. Oh, okay. Um, so public participation. What we do when we go on the road like this, we reserve public participation for the residents of the building that we're in. So we kind of suspend any formalities. We didn't need to be notified before. So um, 
if the residents of Winslow that are here would like to speak, just raise your hand. But before we do that, we just want to go through the other facilities, the presence of the facilities. And so uh, Fred is not here from Drake. Mike is not here from QSAC. Chestnut is having their election today, I've been told. And Jen is here from Monotony. Anything you want to talk about? Yeah. Just speak up. This machine's a little loud here. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. First of all, there's liability involved. So no, it's liability, so, you know, mm -hmm. and you need to have you need to have some type of an agreement, you know. No, no, that's, that's fine. I mean, that's what you can do. Not the same uh, I mean, if you just tell the people to join in what they need. Well, actually, you wouldn't do it. You forward it right to here. So if there's somebody that wants to utilize that place, you right. you, you send I, it to the office. I understand that, but it's taking, you know, because they have to, they don't have a second place. You know, it's taking. Just the grid. I believe some of the other programs or all the other programs are might even be AHA programs, but I can I can look into that because I think that's a good point. But if it's an AHA program, then we direct and authorize it. The difference is this is an outside agency that wants to use the room. You know what I mean? I, yeah, well, we did that. We directed that back then. So they just have to, they just have to go through the process. No, because that's our program. We directed that. Correct. And I, in the way the way that I looked at it, just 
Yeah, if it's an AHA sponsored program, then we, we bring them in. But in this case, if I'm understanding correctly, the Girl Scouts want to use the facility. Um, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you probably Yeah, they want to use the facility. They want to do it on a weekly basis, obviously. That's when they have the meetings, right? Um, yeah. So it's, in theory, you're. Yeah, in theory, you're renting out the space, you know? It's, it's, so it's an outside agency that wants to use the space. So, so they'd have to. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, well, is the Girl Scout sponsored by the Town Association? No. It's not you. You, you like in the, 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 I'm not too familiar with the Girl Scouts, but the Boy Scouts are sponsored by the charitable organization. So, so the, so so the church is, you know, the, the First Baptist Church that has a Boy Scout troop under it sponsors that troop. So the Thompson sponsoring the, the troop? No. Uh, it's just it's Thompson. Yeah, Thompson. So the troop leader, that is the Yeah. And they're using the Thompson now? No, no. What? Sorry. Oh really? Yeah. They don't let you. You never used the school. We used the school before, but they rent. They have the after school program, and all the other programs are running there. They just they they run around and take. So they're looking for yet another outside space to really start because they have kids that come from the after school program from the back on then. They try to find something to focus on them. They go to the library and see them there, but that's hard for the kids to get there because they can just walk. To put on the air from the one of the two leaders can pick them up at some point versus get them up at the front. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, that's a pretty structured organization. I'm sure they can just get a certificate, name us, and sure. I mean, it's pretty easy. Well, I mean, if they break a window, you know what I mean? Somebody's going to sign and have responsibility of it. Right. Not that they're going to break down, but that's the boys' yeah. yeah. Boys' yeah. Anything else? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, multiple residents have been asking me why um, the board is not taking their board to the manner. We, okay. didn't, we never said we wouldn't. Well, when they see it, they do it. Oh, it's, it. it's going to be good. Yeah. But I think, yeah. I think next week is, next month is um, Tuesday, yeah. right? Tuesday. Tuesday, and then, then the manor. Unless you want to do the manor for it. Lastly, after the meeting, I'm going to be presenting you guys with the online question. When I when I reviewed the notes for um panel you requested some space What's the memorandum you want to present? The memorandum letter says, um, oh. the Is this 
it's normally that you look at that these are of the um incentives of business providing okay um anything else jen yeah, oh, sounds good uh doreen is doreen here oh there's doreen we just have two items on the agenda um december 3rd is a holiday bazaar we have our last meeting coming up in a week to finalize everything and it's looking good um and we have our christmas dinner on the 21st and I'm proud to say that we have Arlington High, Arlington High School coming in for um, string quartet for oh, music, wow. for background music. Oh, for that's very dinner. good. Excellent. And um, I just found out that having them come in, whatever we pay them, whatever we're going to donate to them, they're going away in next year to Italy. Oh. And this will help fundraise. Oh, wow. Well, so I was very excited yeah. to be able to do that because years ago, my children went to Japan. Yeah. So I know what they're going to yeah. to try and raise money. Yeah. You know, so I was I was happy about that. How many are there in that group? Well, we were yeah. only going to have four come in. Yeah. Four of them. And because this isn't the yeah, right. very big. And I don't know how many are going to actually you know, yeah. attend the dinner. Yeah, we haven't taken that count yet. But it was, it, she, um, I called and I spoke with the director. Yeah. She was very, very nice. And um, she's going to, She's actually going to send me music over um, on email to let me yeah. hear them to see what they sound like, you know, before I even have, you know, have them come in. That's a great idea. Yeah. We should uh, tell the other LTOs yeah. see if they want to try and do the same. Yeah, yeah it would be great because they're trying, they, she said they're doing all kinds of fundraising yeah. to, um, yeah. you know, I said, and then she said, be very excited when I said we'll feed them. We'll give them a meal. They can, you know, play, have them have a meal, and then finish off. Yeah. So she said that works out. That works out yeah. wonderful. So That's she great. was all excited about it. That's great. And then come January, we'll just go back to our normal events Excellent. and try and book yeah. things all up again. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Uh, open to anybody else in Winslow would like to speak. Yes, sir. Yes. I have a question about these video conferences that we put in the office. I'd like to know how much that costs. What I can't, this machine's a little loud. What, right. what did you say? Yeah, um, the new air conditioning heats that are being put in. Heat like pumps. Um, yeah, the heat pumps. I don't know how much they cost. Nothing. Nothing. Because it seems to be a waste where you just put a brand new air conditioner in all but 44 hours. I mean, it just seems to be a waste of time and effort to do all of this. Is heat, is heat, I mean, heat and AC. Yeah, yeah. They're mini splits. They do both. Yeah, they're mini splits. So. So we have not received any information whatsoever except for that they were coming into our office. And believe me, I never had any problem. Yeah, they're quiet. They're very quiet. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Well, that's not quiet. quiet. <laughs> that's a little different. Uh, well, but, yeah. But, yeah. I went to Catherine and um and Chris and I had a meet a shot meeting with Chris and I asked all I knew nothing at our monthly meeting about this. I so I couldn't answer any questions. And I sat down with Chris and he answered every question I had from him from different tenants and I posted them. So they're they're all around the place that it, you know, and then it says if you have any more questions, you can get either. Dr. Catherine or Dr. Chris, because he gave me everything yeah. he knows about it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's a positive thing. First of all, it's free, so we're getting a grant for it. But you know, it's another. You know, augment your AC. You know, you've got one unit. This would this would be another one, but it's primarily a heating unit. So. Once the notice said, once we got the people that got the new windows in the new landing from the house authority, they're going to be disconnected somehow. I mean, and how if you want to get rid of it, can we take that ourselves and sell it? Whatever we do, no, no. no. I can eat. So, so our plan right now, and obviously, you know, it's in the early stages, but our plan would be, hopefully, you know, we're going to be able to raise funds in the coming years, coming in, hopefully soon, and finish those windows in the middle, and at the same time, we'll be able to um, create an alternative for those spaces where the air conditioning units are right now. And that would be in one project, and then it would um, it would result in what we think will be a good solution moving forward, which would include those new windows in the middle units. 
I mean, I can think of a lot of things that we probably dealt with a lot of months of that night. I'm style car, um, the bathrooms, the kitchens, those stoves that are a little bit larger than the 18 inch that we have. Now, some of us like to cook. As you know, Jack, I had a little bit of a family's department. But, you know, they're horrible. They're small, tiny little things. You can't put a turkey in them. Happy to all yeah, thank you. Uh, you're right. Bob, well, well, it's just really bad at the greenhouse, and I don't consider my. All right, who else? Uh, just, and you mentioned that the middle unit, the middle unit, um, might get windows at some point in time. Do you have an ETA on that? I can't provide an ETA, um, unfortunately. Okay. Yes. I don't even want to provide that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's but it's um it's it's on our mind and we're and we're actively trying to find ways to to move it up so that it can address all the different issues. Yeah. Yeah. Right in front. I have a couple of questions actually. So they said they were going to disconnect all the heaters. Are they also disconnecting disconnecting the heater in the bathroom? And and you um I'm I'm curious about that. So you got a notice saying they're going to disconnect the heaters. I need to all check into heaters. that. The thermostats and the thermostats. That's what Chris told me, and that's what I told. So, so, so let me let me follow up on that because um, what Chris had said to me is once they have the um, heater and AC new ones in working order and yeah, there's no right. problems, then they'll start start removing the old stuff. Okay. But once those stop working, you're going to disconnect them, not remove them, just in case they need them for a backup. Oh, oh no. no. That's what Chris told me. They're, they're available as a backup. But the bathroom will not be touched at all. Bathroom will stay the same. I, I think, you know, if I, if I can, yeah. and um, I think what when Doreen met with Chris, I think that was a good pathway. If we need to have meetings with the residents about this, we will. Uh, but if it's if it's easier for the residents to submit questions to Doreen, and then again, we can you know, go through the, the list. We can confirm again with the contractor to make sure all the all the questions are accurate, and then we can post it. I have one more question yeah. on that. Did I hear you right that it might take years to get those air conditioners out of the windows? We'll come up with a solution before then for that. Because otherwise, we have heaters we can't use and air conditioners can't use thermostats that are no good, and it's just like. We, I don't want to call it, you know, no, I, I, all this excess old equipment is kind of like getting the parts. I understand your concern. And and I and I believe we have a good solution for that. Okay. And we'll provide that in the um in the frequently asked questions. Okay. Behind us? I have a question. I left for a few minutes. I'm up by I apologize for that. But I'm at a middle unit and I have I understand that you need a separate uh, Heat pump for each individual individual unit. Yes. But when I look at my unit, basically it's one wall, and I don't see any place, any place else except for the mount that except on my wall. So essentially it should be three units. And I'm worried about potential noise issues. I don't know what kind of noise these things make or vibrate. It's very quiet. Or if they're going to be on the wall or the which wall they're actually yeah. going to be on. They're going to be on the walls. On the sides. Oh. So if you're a middle unit, you're not going to have any on your wall. Oh. And the reason for that is because they need they need to be attached to concrete so that it's a solid base, and um, and then they'll have different devices installed to it to deal with any any potential vibration. But it's but it's minimal. Yeah. Yep. So I just want to make sure we have this because this building. We need side step, side step, and pull the image, and then you pull something. Yep. But we don't understand where you're coming from. I understood. Yeah. I have a blind girl on my floor. Yeah. She didn't know what a fridge can do. She can't do that. Yeah. I mean, I try to take up one of these people, just go to the don't come down because they don't understand where you're coming from. I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I just yeah. asked him, and we'll make sure that the property managers and Trish, you know, will notice squat like that. You know, we'll have a, a list of folks that need help and understanding the notices, whether it be language or whatever. I'm so, noticing so. this the hospital is already going to provide the help people that are blind. It's not yeah. just Jack? some yeah. this Total. building, other building. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're going to have too. It's very difficult. Yeah. yeah. And, and the only thing I'd like to add is, you know, we're always adding individuals to our, our list of individuals that need special accommodations. And, you know, we do have individuals on that list at different developments who, if we send something out, we have to send it out by email, or in some cases, we have to follow up with a phone call. And that's and that's normal practice. With that, um, if, if there is an individual who you know that needs that accommodation and hasn't requested it, I would strongly encourage them to reach out to their property manager and service coordinator so we can make, make those, um, those adjustments. And if you have a new tenant that comes in, you know, we didn't know so about I would, it. I would encourage you, know, you to call, call Tricia. We're talking yeah, Tricia. We have a, a woman from Egypt. It, you know, that's not her language. She doesn't know about the compressors going on the balcony. And some yeah. people need so, help yeah. clearing yeah. that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, when we get to that point, obviously you're going to have to help you. Yeah, but then it's going yeah. on now. Well, we the compressors are going on the, in the, yeah, they're on the balcony. The first phase is going on right now. So, we'll like, it's, it's going to be minimal, minimally invasive. Um, they're, they're fairly slim, but I don't know if any of the residents here have had them already attached. Maybe you could attest. Yeah. Like, do you, do you, I have to go to the side. Not to put you on the spot, Laura, but do you feel that you've lost a lot of space on the, on the balcony? Just, uh, 18. Okay. Yeah. So, I, 18. 18. I have a small. I have one of the small balconies, you know, front and back are small. Yeah. And um, so it's, I can still, I'll still be able to sit there at two chairs at the table. Um, and use it. But there are what there's one on top of another. But if you know of anybody that needs help, communicate with the property managers and fishing. Oh, all right. You know, right. because we may not know, just like the yeah. lady that you mentioned. So communicate. I try to use sign language. Yeah. Have no idea what yeah. I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, if they get up, I don't know. Yeah, but. I'm um, getting back to the celebration. Now, here's an idea. Go ahead. Uh, the town hall did this for the 100th birthday, yeah. and they took every 10 years and did the history of the important drug yeah. that kind of 10 years. Yeah. So that's kind of. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah I think we put a committee together. Oh, and, good. Uh, you know, uh, folks in all the facilities, you know, it could uh, be a big committee, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be a small one, and figure out what's the best way. I, I think it'd be great to have a, a, a dinner or a function at the town hall and, as and the uh, final Fenway celebration. Park. I mean, for everyone to... <laughs> at Fenway Park, yeah. plus you all in there. <laughs> that Henry guy has got a lot of interest in this. Uh, the only uh, thing about the compressors on the balcony is that you do lose your view. If you're on the end and you're looking out now, you can see compressors. Before I could see the horizon, but now I can see. I didn't lose my view. I put on it, and I didn't lose my view at all. Well, you're gonna get a taller chair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she has yeah. two. She has two. I have two at a row. In front of one. But it's on the high face mask out. Yeah, I have one. They put them there and I can see how I but see. Now I can not, see. Not much yeah, nothing about it. Yeah, I'm just saying that's the only thing. That right. It's the price for progress. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah.
We, we do have a list of individuals that need accommodations. Um, and, you know, we're, per our language policy, we're required to translate certain documents into certain languages. Um, we try to go above that in, in a lot of cases. Um, you know, I think it's something that we can continue to improve on. Um, but, you know, we try to engage with some of the larger um, non-English speech speaking uh, populations that we have, whether it's um, those that speak Mandarin or Spanish, or, or others, depending upon the property. And there is a list of um, those individuals that need accommodation, but I think it's something that we, you know, it's always updating, it's, it's improving. And I think it's worth um, me circling back with the property managers, the service coordinator, and um, and Chris uh, this week just to see where we stand with that to make sure uh, those are being adhered to. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, any other questions? What? responded to your email. I don't know if you got it. And then, then let's take it up after the meeting. Because it, it really isn't open for these folks I that you want your table. There's nothing confidential that's going to come out of my mouth. I just don't think it's appropriate. Let's take it up with Jack after. One over here after. So, there are, the housing is working on it with various outside agencies. It's a very delicate issue and they're working on it. I slept in my car last night and I have to again tonight. And, and that's not right, and it's not right if you people expect it to be right. Okay, the people are nothing more, as far as I can see, than four or five landlords. Okay, no affiliation with the town that I can see, other than sharing the name of the town. Okay, it's up to you people to manage the building with all due respect, and that includes the tenants. And you should people shouldn't expect. Okay with me, my neighbor, the people across the hall. You people shouldn't be having staff upstairs told not to get involved. But let the tenants deal with it. It shouldn't be that way. Well, let's talk about it after. So last last thing I want to I must give a round of applause to James, who's done a great job here. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Mickey, I'll be up here. Thanks, Richie. So, I know. Thanks for coming, Red. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, to win. Nick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Brian's a yes. And the meeting is adjourned. There's some refreshments over here. And uh, thank you, folks.